All right, everyone, we're going to give, see if uh, a few people happen to come across the live today. Let's get a way that you can kind of, there you go, you can see some, see some candles, see my swords in the background. Those all the neat options. Uh, yeah, we're not. Let's send it to a few people, even though I know they probably won't say anything. Okay, you know what? I am just going to get started. Because uh, I'm not going to wait for anybody to join. I'm just going to kind of go. So everyone, welcome back. Brett the Wizard, Reading Wednesday. How is everyone doing? I did my little morning video this morning. And um, to be honest with you, I forgot what it's kind of about, to be honest with you. Um, however, with that being said, tonight, I'm not sure what I'm going to exactly be talking about tonight. Um, I mean, I've had a whole plethora of neat experiences this week. But everyone, as you're probably re reading this or watching this, you're probably going to want to watch a reading of some sort first, I suppose. Because um, that's kind of what everybody's in for. That's kind of what the beacon of light type thing is. So we'll see what's happening. So, um, let's see. Do we do runes or tarot? Hmm. Runes or tarot? I'm curious. What am I feeling tonight? Probably should do runes, because runes are something that not everybody sees. Um, but we'll try shuffling tarot. Oh. My, uh, thank you, Erica. You, you, you're saying tarot? Well, we'll, we'll see what the universe has to say, either one way or the other. I hope any, if you're watching this post-playback, anybody who might be watching this now, that that's kind of hiding. Hope you're having a great day. Um, you know, I know I've been... I've been uh, been doing one of those things where kind of shifting behavioral patterns. I guess that's what we can talk about today. I really don't know what I talk about daily because it just kind of shifts around based on what's all going on. Um, I mean, I have been trying to uh, change a lot of my behavioral patterns to uh, better implement certain things and just be more productive in general because uh, that's one of those things I've always struggled with. And uh, you know what? I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you can kind of see some, kind of like a little bit of a setup back there. Got some paintings, oops, from a friend of mine as I drop cards all over the place while I'm shuffling them. Probably hearing on the microphone. And uh, you know what, even if, you, even if uh, anybody who may not be watching this live and you're watching it in playback, feel free to question, comment. Um, obviously, you won't be live reading at that point in time, uh, but I do do my best to get back to everybody as best as possible. And uh, I did tarot last week. I did, no, I did runes last week. Did uh, tarot the week before. Yeah, I guess we'll do tarot. Uh, just got to make sense. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to do something that I'm kind of not used to doing. I'm just going to pull off the bottom of the deck. And uh, we got quite quite the good one. I'm going to do a couple. I'm going to read them kind of like a story. So I did do a reading party last weekend. I did a couple of online readings. Uh, so I'm always open for that if you are watching this post. And um, let's just contact me. It, it's, it's a unique way of doing things. It's a way that I find interesting that, you know, it kind of allows for a little bit of interpretation, client to client, reading to reading, person to person, which is what we're all about these days anyways. Anyways, okay, first card. I know, I apologize with my camera. Um, but th this is a neat card because this card here, bear in mind, this is kind of for this week. So when you're watching this kind of post, you know, you can kind of think of it, what's kind of, what, what can you kind of expect for this week? And the first big thing you can expect is that, you know what, you are going to have your ups, you are going to have your downs. And the neat thing that I like about this this uh, card is that it represents that. you got your light, shiny stuff on top, and, you, and then it's the, the dark kind of blah stuff underneath. Uh, but the one big thing that's very important to keep in note about all of this is that it's going to be very passionate. You're going to have to use your passions, use your emotions. Don't let them control you. You control them because that's what's very important. Uh, 
work with your emotions because they are key of what, key part of what makes us human, obviously. However, with that being said, um, you know, sometimes it's good to let a yell out or a little cry out. Doesn't matter whether you're male or female, young or old. We all need to cry. We all need to yell. We all need to get those pent up emotions out because really, you're not doing anybody any good by holding that stuff in. That is not, you know, letting it build up to a point that you're getting ready to explode is not the correct way to handle it. And I'm no psychologist. I just, I do counseling on the side, part of UPM. However, um, you know, holding it up until it's this big ball of negative energy really isn't uh, the best thing to do. So be sure to use those emotions to work through those ups and, or work through those downs and enjoy those ups, enjoy the, those elated feelings. And you know what? And the thing is, the other thing I'm kind of drawn to is right up there. That, that's, that's one of the runes or at least one of the different interpretations of a rune that, uh, you know, basically just kind of symbolizes, you know, it's going to be through those trials that you're going to have uh, a little bit of success in uh, whatever the endeavors that you're trying to shoot for. Card number two. This card here. Now, anybody reading, everybody watching this, reading this, might be able to give me a bit more clear indication on this, but I've done a little bit of research on this, or at least a story that I've always kind of gone with that really makes sense when I look at this guy. I get, I get a sense from this guy that, you know, this chief, he kind of broke barriers back in the day. Yes, back in the day. I'm being very technical there. Uh, in his time period. And he, uh, you know, he set barriers. He worked with pioneers and that kind of stuff. He worked with the people who were different on the different tribes. And uh, let's see if I can get some of that lake glare off it. Probably not. I apologize. Not the best setup. And, um, you know, he broke those barriers. However, he ended up getting uh, ultimately... Um, ended slightly early if that makes any sense then he probably should have because he was ahead of his time however that's what we need right now we need people who are ahead of their time we need people who are willing to look past the various isms that are out there um as one of my friends so delicately puts it and i think it's a very way of good of, of uh, saying it uh and we need people who are willing to lead who are willing to stand up who are willing to uh kind of be those beacons of hope. Be the be the examples and the leaders. If that makes any sense. Because we need leaders right now. We already have enough people. We already have enough followers. We have enough people who think they're leaders. Uh, but, you know, the true leaders are the ones who do it because that's the right thing to do. Not because they're getting paid to do it. Not because they are, you know, this person in power who they feel they have a social responsibility to do so. Often the leaders are the ones that are starting the small little movements who are actually making a difference. And that's what this gentleman did. Uh, the very important thing that to note with this one is the fact that the yellow on the border, which indicates earth. So everything that you are kind of working through, everything that you're trying to pioneer in your own life and break those barriers in your own life, it's gonna take time. Because the earth, it's always there, it's always under your feet, it always gives, but you have to work it. Nothing comes easy nothing comes for free you always have to put a little bit of effort into your life as i've said earlier this week you always have to improve yourself this card embodies that always work on yourself is what i call it and actually i can't take that that's from another person that i i'm kind of following them and learning from them so it's kind of neat but you can't you can't just go day to day floating on autopilot that's just not the way to do things I mean, especially now, you have to use this. Yeah, this is the most important tool you have right now. You have to use this. Make those informed decisions. Do the research. You know, make your own decisions. That's the big thing. Your own decisions. Not what Mary Lou said in such and such a Facebook group or Instagram post. Take that into account, but you make your own decisions. That's the main thing. It's because you got to make your own decisions got to think for yourself you got to operate on your own level and if you happen to find your tribe that operate on the same level great that is awesome you're stepping through things you get people to support you if you don't well just keep rocking your own vibe until you end up getting that okay so then now this is a bit of a downer however it kind of makes sense with a little bit what's going on i mean i think last week i i, I saw a whole bunch of like things kind of shaking things up a little bit um you know don't be afraid 
as much as this card looks like there's chaos and everything else and behind it just doesn't look very well and under the bottom if you can read it through my not so good camera disappointment um it's not necessarily about disappointment what it's about it's about learning and i've had to do this to this by the way this week made a couple of mess ups at work that were not big deals but were great learning opportunities that's another thing you got this is that's what i'm kind of pulling from this it's do not be afraid to make mistakes do not be afraid to be like water that's what the blue around the outside donates the elemental water because water it fits any vessels to put into right and so if uh you know do not be afraid you make a mistake to change your behavior patterns to change a thought process to learn something new do you see kind of where i'm going with this you have to keep improving yourself you have to keep trying to learn you have to keep trying to push your own barriers because if you do not push your own barriers nobody sure as hell is going to push them for you they will try but if you're not willing and you're not able to move and push your own barriers you will end up pushing back against that person or that organization or that entity that is trying to push you and it will not be productive in any way, shape or form for any of the parties involved. And more specifically, you're wasting all this energy, all this time, all this money, all these different resources on a problem that won't necessarily, or on a solution that won't solve your problem. Maybe, maybe on the Band-Aid solution, sure. But a long term, you're not solving anything. You're taking the easy way out. So do not be afraid to make your mistakes. Do not be afraid to get angry with yourself. And it's okay to be angry with yourself because you made a mistake. But learn from it. That's the big thing. That's probably what I'm going to talk about. Is just to continuously keep growing on yourself. And give you a couple of examples this week. And I'm feeling one more card. Which really isn't helping so that, that you know this might be a bit of a challenge week for a good number of other people this card here it says cruelty but the big thing that i that i kind of look at it's like you know, like this animal it's got a little sword stuck in and around it um the other big thing to take note is the white around it the wind we can see the effects of wind but we can't see wind itself so you can kind of imagine that there's going to be a lot of forces that are going to be trying to push a lot of harm a lot of negative energy onto you whether that's a family friend family member because toxic person doesn't matter their blood or not can still be toxic um family member whatever whoever it might be there's going you know spirit i don't like using the word demon because quite frankly yeah that's a whole other life entirely if you are watching this post or even if you are watching this now comment would you like me to actually do a live on angels and demons and other thing like anything like that because that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I'd like to talk about that stuff, but I don't know, I'm not sure what everybody would like. Um, could do it in a podcast. I am going to be putting a podcast together, but that's beside the point. Plug. Uh, anyways, so back to the reading. I'm sorry, all over the place. So, you know, sometimes you will have that negative influence that will end up creating a lot of chaos, especially in this current climate. So just don't, like I said, don't be afraid to say it's okay that I made a mistake or that something happened that didn't turn out the way you wanted to. That's fine. That, you know, if, if you have that unhealthy optimism, I believe is what psychologists call it, you know, you're, you have this unrealistic expectation that everything's going to be peachy, everything's going to be happy, everything's going to be um, rainbows and sunshines and unicorn farts that sprinkle sparkles all over the place. Everything isn't. It's called human life. Like like in the, the first card, the Wheel of Fortune, you have your ups, you have your downs. How you handle your downs determine how well you get to celebrate your ups. And how well you celebrate your ups determine and what you learn from both aspects of the cycle will will determine how you uh, how you kinda grow and how you how you work through things. Huh. Okay. I'm just a, a great thing of, of great news right now. Um, so now this is kind of a more, I, I'm just drawing until I feel like I don't need to talk, draw anymore. Um, however, this card here, not necessarily the most positive readings for this week, but it's going to be a great leak for learning for people. It's a great, it's going to be a great understanding for everything that's kind of going on with everyone. 
And uh, as much as this card says uselessness, you're starting to see a common theme, chaos, um, effect of uh, influences from that you can't necessarily see, that kind of stuff. More of that. Again, don't be afraid to just work with it, work with what life hands you. Uh, it's much easier said than done. I know, I know, I know. Before you start flaming me, I know. Much easier said than done. Uh, but I have a couple of kind of small examples that I'm going to try and depersonalize and take names out. But we'll see how they go. Um, but with all that being said, though, again, there's going to be a lot of chaos. Just make sense of it. Step through it. Learn. Challenge yourself to handle the situation differently. That just came to mind. Make sure you're trying to handle the situation. So you're not just hitting your head against the wall until it bleeds. And then continually doing it because that's not going to help anybody if you don't actually solve the problem. And last but not least, we'll do we'll do one more. Why not? Why not? You guys went here. This one's actually quite quite a good quite a good one for all of that, and it sums up exactly what I have been saying. The card says perfection, but to me, it looks like balance. It looks like harmony of self. Financial self, spiritual self, and psychological self. And so all of that challenge and all of those opportunities to learn that you're going to be presented with this week, just bear in mind that there's probably a purpose for it. And the way that I like look at it is you got like this kind of this circular barrier that's covering a closed eye. And that closed eye, you know, you can kind of think of it as, you know, that's you taking a break and you have some protection. Because you got the four spears that are all back and forth. You got a nice, beautiful, serene uh, forest and calmer sky all behind it. It's about that balance. It's about learning to balance, as I call, the, the human triangle or the, uh, the, the triangle of just triangle of balance. Where um, you have the three sides or three points and you have your psychological self material or psychological self, emotional self, material self, and uh, spiritual self. Or you, you know, as the Asians called it off Viching, I think like sexual self, uh, financial self, and uh, something else. I forget what the third one is. Uh, it's been a very long time since Viching, but I've adapted it to my own needs. Anyways, an Viching, if you don't know, is an Asian form of divination that takes like an hour and a half to do a reading, but it's very accurate if you can actually pull through a whole reading. I've only done one or two myself, and it takes a lot of interpretation, and the book's like a mile thick. Uh, but it's a neat thing if you ever get the opportunity to try it. it. might surprise you guys one day if I can get a hold of the old book that I had. Once it's somebody, can't find it. But anyways, okay. So that that's kind of the reading. Um... You know, not necessarily negative reading in aspects. It's just it's going to be a great opportunity this week to learn. It's going to be a great opportunity this week to grow, to work on yourself, to work through different aspects and challenges that you probably previously didn't even think were an issue. Someone may trigger you. Someone, you know, you may look in the, the, the mirror like I did probably about two weeks ago. I got to get rid of this COVID-19, not the virus, the weight that put on both physically, emotionally, and psychologically, as well as spiritually, because there has been some weight spiritually that has been put onto that as well. And that's when I decided the thing about last week to invest in myself. And if anybody follows me on Facebook personally, I've procured an old mountain bike and I have a trunk bike rack. And... <laughs> Oh, scraps of poetry and madness. My vote for angels and demons. That is a very hot topic. That will end up either being a podcast or I'll do a live and record it and then make it into a podcast. Because for something like that, I have a few friends that I do believe would love to weigh in on that. And that would be a very heated debate, plus also very educational with any luck, if it doesn't get too sacrilegious or blasphemous by what other people have said, I can get when I get talk like that. But it's just that I have a unique way of seeing things. That's all it is. It's just my unique way of seeing things. 
with the fact that I walk the line, I'm neutral when it comes to energy work, unbiased as best I can. And I attempt to give everything an equal chance at life. And that's that's kind of the old ways of doing things before um, before this whole notion of light versus dark came into play. And uh, don't get me wrong, there is still light versus dark to some extent, but it's just, in my opinion, a shade of gray. Uh, but with that being said, tangent, back on. Uh, to, you know, when you're trying to improve yourself, you can't actually take that light and gray thing to, uh, in, in a reply to what we're talking about today. And the reasoning for that is that sometimes when you're investing in yourself, when you're trying to grow yourself, you know, other people see you doing the hard work, but they don't know exactly what you're doing underneath it, underneath the surface, in behind the scenes, the meditation, the long hours at work, if you're, if you're under, if you're trying to change your financial situation, um, you know, the savings you're trying to, to do the, um, hmm, how to say this, like the emotional work you're trying to do, the relationships you're trying to build, all anybody sees is just the tip of the iceberg, like the Titanic. They only saw the tip of the iceberg. They didn't see the other, like, mile of iceberg underneath it, which ended up capsizing them, which is where people end up kind of getting jealous and rage and anger and that kind of jazz because they, don't, they only see the end result. They don't see you investing in yourself as a person, as a spiritual soul, as a being, as an entity of love, and uh, like that balance, that yin yang, that, that you know, you got to have the love, the light, and the darkness in yourself, in yourself, and work with both, and learn from both, and be both, not just be light, or not just be darkness, be as what I call gray. You know, Star Wars does it great with uh, the, you know, not so much in the movies. The movies haven't really gotten to that point yet, um, but the comics and the uh, the the books, they started to touch on like an order of gray Jedi where they walked both the light and the dark at the same time. Kind of along the like, on lines what you kind of have to do as a person because there's, there's a lot that's going to be coming up. And I, I had a very good conversation with a couple of uh, Energy Work Network people today and friends and people are in tune and I, I've been trying to do a lot of work in the background, both on me personally and upstairs metaphysically, to try and help things as best they can along both in this world and in other worlds. And as, as crazy as it sounds, um, you know, there's going to be a good deal of testing and how you come out of it was completely up to you. There, you're, you know, each and every one of us is going to be presented with a good number of personal challenges. And how you decide to handle them, how you react to them, how you help others through them. Because quite often, working through your own challenges will allow you to help other people. Keep that in mind. Will determine how you come out of it. And I have to be very specific and vague on how I say this. I do apologize. I can't really say too much. Because uh, it's stuff that I'm working on. It's stuff that is supposed to happen that nobody is supposed to stop. And, uh, you know, I don't like doing biblical terms. But, you know, everybody's going to be tested. And it's going to be trying for those who are attuned and those who are aware because you're going to have everybody who's never had to deal with any of this before all of a sudden is going to have to deal with it. Everybody who has all their inner demons and inner uh, challenges and things they haven't dealt with, they're going to have to deal with it. And some people are going to fly through it. Some people are going to struggle. And no matter how you work through it, it doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, really, it does in the long run. But... It's about to sound cliche, and I know I am. It's about the journey. It's not about the destination. Because these vessels have a finite amount of energy and resources in them. And we, some of us burn through it quicker. Other ones don't. Sometimes our soul is written to have different 
mm, destination, so let's, let's, because that's the word I've used before. And sometimes that's a quick and brief time here on Earth, and other times it's, you know, you're living to be like, uh, I think I remember reading something about someone in China celebrating 130th birthday. Um, and so, I mean, just take them in stride. Invest in yourself and grow financially, spiritually, emotionally. Learn to forgive people who have harmed you or wronged you because everyone's to everyone today is out to get like revenge or get even or you did this to me 15 years ago. I'm going to get even now, even though it happened 15 years ago. You know, grudges don't do you any good. Holding on to that stuff doesn't do any good. You can invest in yourself by your physical activity. You can, you know, still, you know, like, don't wrong. Getting angry with people over legitimate reasons, no problem. Cutting ties with people over legitimate reasons, go right on ahead. You have to do what you have to do to make yourself safe, to make sure that your loved ones are safe. But, you know, after everything's all said and done and you're at that safe distance, you don't have to necessarily talk to the person or talk to the individual or entity or organizations that are doing it. But just take some time. Take some time and look at them. Look at why they're doing it. Do research into the driving forces behind it. And you know what? And I, mean, I, I, I almost swore I have to keep this very clean for this because uh, I'm not sure what Instagram and Facebook like for this. You'll find that everybody, if a lot of people, if not everybody, is all suffering or traumatized by very similar challenges or experiences. And some just haven't dealt with it better than others. And even though they themselves don't know how to show love, or they themselves don't know how to accept love. That's another big thing. You know, eventually, maybe, you might be surprised. You might be surprised with the outcome that might happen from it. And that's what, you know what, and, you know, like, because I've helped people. Story time. I had a few clients where way back when I was first starting to do my energy work and uh, you know, my paranormal stuff and house clearings and stuff like that, that I, you know, I went in, did my thing with my teams that I worked with or my own team that I ran at, at first sometime too. And I cleared these people's houses and I gave them a safe space to be able to start working on their themselves. And I gave them a list of things that they had to work on so that it didn't happen again. Because nine times out of 10, it's not necessarily the location that is haunted. It is something that the person themselves or the client or the homeowner has manifested through emotional things, childhood trauma, uh, you name it, the list goes on forever. And so a couple of these people, you know, I, I cleared it, I helped them through it, spent like six months working on it. And you know, they're fine. Their house is clear for like a month or two and then Get a call. Oh, it's back. I don't know what's going on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I immediately let, start talking to the energy and dealing with it. And all I get is, well, she didn't learn or he didn't learn or, you know, or they're just repeating the same things. And so when I tried to bring that up, of course, people, when they get called out from their, uh, their bad behaviors and such, myself included, get a little defensive. And so then went our own different ways. And then, funny thing is, is like, probably years later, years later, I run into this person randomly, or I do something like this, they kind of, and it pops up, and then they message me. And turns out that, kind of me walking away from that situation, forced them to fix themselves, or look at themselves. And they fully admit to being angry with me on the first, when I first did it, but afterwards they appreciated what I did. And so that, you know, that like just the, the moral of the story is 
sometimes people don't realize what they're doing is hurting themselves or incorrectly until an outside influence changes what's going on. And that, that's true for myself. Because before I was, when I was trying to get UPM all up and running, again, for the umpteenth time, because it's been something I've, it's been an ongoing project. I, um, I was in a pretty dark place. I wasn't listening to my guides. I wasn't listening to the universe, that kind of stuff. And, you know, and it took some pretty surreal circumstances from people that I wouldn't have expected to have conversations with certain things to happen tech wise for things to go a certain way. But here I am. I listened and I'm rocking it. And here I am attempting to be a spearhead, a beacon of light for any who may be guided to see these, to be guided to reach out to me for any type of paranormal issue or like or um, counseling sessions, reading sessions, whatever. Here I am. I'm out here doing Brett the wizard, whatever that entails. You know, some days it's being a father, others it's a son, others it's a friend, and most days a combination of all of them. You know, others a paranormal investigator, you know, others a, you know, a professional psychic and counselor, grief counselor, whatever. Whatever it calls for the day, that's what I do. And I gladly do it because I know I can make a difference for everybody that is willing to listen to me, who's willing to work with me, because everything I do is a little different. It might be a little harsh. So some people said it's very blunt, but I get my point across. It's effective and it works. Anyways, guys, reading and rant aside, I hope to see I hope to see Moria come out and get interactive. Thank you, Scraps of Poetry and Madness. Great support. I certainly appreciate it. Anybody who's watching post, you need a reading, you need um, need any any sort of paranormal advice or guidance, hit me up, DM me. Uh, you know, I, I'm up to do that. If you're in the Southern Ontario area in Canada, I do do reading parties. COVID-19 puts a, a bit of a twist on it, so contact me for details. And you know what, everyone? Keep it balanced, keep it positive, and just take your challenges for this week in stride and just work on it one step at a time. Everyone, thanks for watching if you've made it this far, and I'll see you later.